Hello everyone, I'm Miss Tierra and welcome to today's lesson. So today we are doing pictorial handscapes. So we are going to be using our very own handprints to make pictorial maps. So why don't we jump into our slideshow and learn a little bit more about printmaking and map making. So printmaking is actually one of the oldest forms of art making. So back in the caveman times, it actually started off with handprints like the ones we're going to do today. It wasn't too long after the advent of printmaking that people moved into cities or towns and map making began. So you can see here a really old map that was carved into stone. So there actually became a special name for people that made maps. Does anyone have any ideas of what it is? If you guessed cartographer, you guessed correctly. So cartography is the art or science of making maps. So today we're all going to become cartographers. So you might have noticed in the top left corner of our picture, we have a compass rose. So the compass rose has all four cardinal directions, north, east, south, and west, as well as showing northeast, southeast, northwest, and southwest. So today on our own adventure to become cartographers, let's make sure we put in our own compasses or compass roses. So here is our first pictorial map, and you might be a little bit familiar with it. Maybe you've seen your parents use this map to get somewhere on a long car trip, or even just somewhere you've never been before. But it's a little bland, there's not a lot of colors in it, it just has the practical information. How about we take a look at another map? So this map has much more color on it, but as you can see, there's still buildings and roads listed along it. So you can still tell where you're gonna go, but the other pictures that are on it are all of the animal symbols. So you'll know very clearly what area you need to go to to see what animal on the map. So a lot of times when you think of maps, you don't really think of any kind of fun shapes, but even in simple maps like this, there's still some hidden fun shapes. Can anybody see the man in the map? Maybe you didn't see him when you first looked at the map, but there he is, looking off into the distance to the right side of the map. Along the same thought train, people of Michigan seem to think that their map resembles a hand, or maybe even an oven mitt, so people will call it the Michigan mitt. In fact, it looks so much like a hand to them that they will actually use their hands to tell people what part of town they live in. Michigan is one of the states that the Monon Railway runs through. So in the Hoosier Lifeline exhibition, you will see some of these Michigan maps. So why don't we go take a look at the Hoosier Lifeline exhibition and see what kind of pictorial maps we can find there. If you've been to the Carnegie Center for Art and History recently, you might recognize this. So this is one of the views of our Hoosier Lifeline exhibition. So here's another view, and you might be able to tell already we have a ton of maps. So let's take a look at some of the maps that we have right now. So there are a few different types of maps that we have in the exhibition, like this one. And we have this map. So in this map, you notice that it focuses mainly on the railways. And you might notice something we talked about in our slideshow. If you look real close, you will see the Michigan Mint. Yep, there it is, just like we were talking about earlier. But you might be thinking, well, this doesn't really seem like the type of maps we were talking about before. And you'd be right. These aren't pictorial maps. Let's look at some pictorial maps that we have in our exhibition. So this one is a pretty old map, but you can see all the little buildings, little trees, all those landmarks that let us know it's a pictorial map. We also have this one. Now this one's of Michigan City, whereas the other one was of New Albany. But in this one, you can very distinctly see all of the road lines. So when we go and make our own maps, we're gonna be putting the road lines first. So they'll be pretty distinct in ours too. The reason why 
we do these maps is for the people that live in these cities, they'll have a really accurate way of telling where they are, what the roads are, everything like that. So if you look at this photo that we have in the exhibition of New Albany, and then you think about that old map, they're not so different. So we've been looking at all of these maps, but none of them really have a hand. Even the Michigan mitt is more of a figurative hand than a literal. So where does the hand idea come in? So if you look at this image from the Hoosier Lifeline show, it's not a map, but if you look closely at it, you will see a map and a hand. So right here, you see that in this hand, in the lines of the hand, are the railway. So essentially this hand is kind of a makeshift map of the railway. So that's what we're gonna do today. But instead of a rail line map, we're going to have a pictorial map. So why don't we look at what supplies we need, get on our aprons and get to our activity. You will need a piece of paper that can fit as many handprints as you want in your map some non-toxic ink, this is block printing ink, a roller, also known as a brayer, to roll the ink, a surface to roll the ink on, I'm using plexiglass, some baby wipes, or you can stop and wash your hands when we get to that point, and oil pastels for drawing. All right, so we are back, we have our supplies, and we have either an apron or an outfit that we can do art in. So before we get started, let's take another look at one of our examples. So right here, we have our very first step presented, which is going to be the handprint. So to start off, you are going to want your plexiglass or whatever surface that you're going to be able to put out ink on. You're going to want your ink and you're going to want your brayer. It's also called a roller. All right, so the first thing that you're wanting to do is you're going to take your ink and we are going to put ink. It's kind of a little hard to see because it's clear, but I'll come up closer to you. So you're going to want to put some ink along the top and this is what you're going to roll out to dip your hand into. So once you have your ink down, you're gonna take your roller or your brayer, whichever one you wanted to call it, and you're gonna roll out the ink. So you're gonna wanna get a good layer on there and you're gonna to wanna to make sure that it is big enough for your handprint to go into. You can hear that sound. So that is how you know that you have a good amount of ink on the surface. So once you have your ink all rolled out, you are going to go ahead and put your hand or both of your hands into the ink and get it nice and inked up. I set mine down on the table because you're probably doing yours on the table just to get more coverage. And I'll go ahead and do both of my hands. So get them nice and inked up. And once your hands look something like this, you're gonna go ahead and go over to your paper and you're going to press both of your hands into the paper. And then you'll have some hand prints. Now, depending on how hard you press down, it'll make darker prints. What parts of your hand you press down, it'll all be up to you. But if you're not satisfied with the print that you make, you can put a little bit more ink on and you can line your fingers back up with where you pressed down before and press back into it. There we go. So now I have some line marks 
down there. So I'm going to do the other side too. I'm going to press my hand back into the ink and I'm going to go ahead and line my fingers back up and press down again. There we go. So the next thing that we are going to want to do is clean off our hands. So either you can use baby wipes or you can go wash your hands in the sink and meet me back here. All right, ready? One, two, three. All right, our hands are all clean now and we are ready to move on to the next part. So why don't we look back at one of our other examples and now we can see that the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use the lines in our hands to make the roadways. So if you look at your hand, you have some real big lines and a bunch of little lines. So we're gonna look at our hand prints on here and we're gonna follow those big lines in order to make our main roads. So, hmm, Miss here is thinking, what color do I wanna pick? for my roads. This is going to be a big color that we have running throughout our whole map. Mm, I think that I am going to pick red. I think my roads are going to be red. All right, so let's see. Right here on my hand, I have this big curve shape. So I'm going to take my red and I'm going to trace that. And let's see, I think that I want this to be a pretty big road. So I'll make it like that. Now, I see another line here, and I think I wanna make this connected to this hand. So I think I'm gonna start here and then have my line go all the way over into the other hand. So this whole area is going to be my map. Now we're just going to continue to trace lines. And your lines can meet up or, you know, how these ones do, they don't have to meet but you're just going to think this is how your citizens in your city, the people that live there, this is how they're going to get around your town. So you just want to make sure that there's plenty of ways. And once you stop um, seeing the big lines in your hands and stuff like that, you can pick out smaller lines, like maybe connect all the lines in your fingers over here, or maybe you have like, Hmm. Over here, you got like a small line in the hand that you want to trace. And you're just going to keep going with your lines until you feel like you have a lot of roads in your town. A good number of roads that all of the people that live in your town can take to get from one part to another. So that looks pretty good. Now, we're going to get to the fun part. We're going to get to where all of the people in your town live, right? All the places that they go on adventures to, their favorite places to eat. So let's think of some places right now together. What's your favorite place to go eat? I think that for me, my favorite place to go eat, maybe Olive Garden, so maybe we'll get a green out We'll actually get out two greens and we're gonna make Olive Garden. So I think maybe over here in this section of town will be our Olive Garden. So I'm gonna make the roof and then the lighter green will be the rest of the building. So that's gonna be my Olive Garden. And I might even take this black and make the door of our Olive Garden. So we want to make sure that the people that live in our town, they know where they live. They can, you know, use our map to get from their house to the Olive Garden. So maybe they live over in here. So I think I'm going to have orange houses 
and light blue houses right here in this neighborhood. So for these houses, instead of doing the house shape, I think I'm going to go more with just a symbol. So we'll put some symbol, like little symbol houses on there. There we go. We have our symbol houses. And then we're going to get our blue houses. Let me get my head out of the way so you can see me drawing the little blue houses. And I guess we'll do another row of our orange houses. And you know, when I was growing up, I had a park in my neighborhood. So I think I'm going to take my greens again. And I think I'm going to make some little circles to show that there are trees in our neighborhood. And maybe, maybe we want our neighborhood to have like a little stream running through it. So I think maybe down here through the side of the neighborhood and maybe in front of those trees, we'll have this little stream and maybe the stream leads out into our map, the greater part of our map. And we can make maybe a big old pond. So our stream is going to come down from this big pond in the middle of our neighborhood. And we can use our lighter blue too to make the water There we go. So what other things do we need for our citizens in our town? I think we're probably going to want, let's see, we have our neighborhood where everybody lives or where some of the people live. We have our Olive Garden. What about a school so that the people that live in our town can go to school? So I'm going to take, mm, I think I'm going to take a peachy color and maybe a gray color and make our school building. So I think I want the school to be kind of close to where the main people live in our town. So maybe, uh, maybe I'll make our school up here. So it's not too far away. It's not as far away as Olive Garden. I'll use the black again to make a little door on our building. And maybe I will take this green and we'll have a little field in front and behind and to the side of our school. Just make a little field there. So what else do we want? We have a restaurant, we have a school, we have some houses, we have a big pond. What about a place for people to go shopping so people can get their groceries, they can get their school supplies, all of that good stuff. So I think that for our uh, little shopping center, I'm going to take a different, a couple different colors. I think that I'm going to want an orange, a red, and a blue, and maybe it can be this, in this part of town. So I'll make a blue building right here. I'll make a red building right here. A 
big orange building. This one is probably going to be our grocery store. And maybe another small red and a little bit of a bigger blue. And then maybe we want to make a parking lot so we can take our gray and make some parking spots since these are all roads people in our town are going to use to come get to these areas. We'll give them a place to park. Okay, so we have a place where they can go shopping. We have a restaurant. We have um, our housing and we have our school. Maybe the people in this neighborhood want some friends. Maybe we'll make another neighborhood. In this neighborhood, we'll do yellow and that peachy color. So maybe we'll make a neighborhood over here. So we'll do a yellow house and another yellow house. Maybe this, this neighborhood will be a little bit more spaced out. And our peach houses. And maybe we will put, you know, maybe instead of some trees, we'll just have a grassy area at both ends of this neighborhood. And actually, maybe they're out in more of a rural area. Maybe up here by the pond, maybe we'll have a farm. So why don't we take our dark green, our lighter green, and our yellow, and we can make a farm. So we'll just, you know, make different colors for the different fields. Maybe the yellow is a cornfield, and the green is a wheat field and maybe the dark green field is a hay field in the early season so we'll have our farm up here and then we can take our brown and we can make a little farmhouse so over here is going to be our farmhouse give it a little roof and maybe build a silo right there next to the farm and that will be up next to the pond so maybe behind there we have a little forest a bunch of trees that separate the pond from the farm and go All right, so our city is shaping up. We have more and more stuff going on, but we have some big blank areas. So let's think what other stuff will people in our town want to be doing? Maybe they want an amusement park. That'd be fun. So I'll use my gray and maybe it'll be down here on the other side of the road from the pond. From the road that connects the two sides of our uh, neighborhood, the two sides of our city. Whichever one you want it to be, you know, maybe it can be really small and it's just kind of, you know, a little section of a bigger city or maybe this is the whole city. But in mine, we're going to put a Ferris wheel. So all the people will have a Ferris wheel to go on and maybe that'll be the carts off the Ferris wheel. And we'll have the platform where you get on the Ferris wheel, give you some stairs to get up it. And 
and maybe we'll have a big carnival tent too in our town so we can have that back here we can have the striped carnival tent and what else do we have at a little carnival like that maybe uh, some food stalls so maybe this one will be healthy stuff like you can get salads and maybe at this blue one you can get some sweet treats like a funnel cake and maybe over here you can get popcorn at the yellow one and let's see so we have this road that takes you there what else we also have the road down here so maybe this road takes you to the parking lot and maybe this will be the grand entrance and this road is the one that they take when they set it all up or something. All right. So we have quite a bit of stuff in our town now. So we have this map. How are people going to know how to get around? We need to put in our compass. So I'm going to use black so it can be really clear in the outline. So we'll put it over, well, actually this is perfect right here. We can put it down in this corner. So we have our directions. We have north up at the top. We have a south down at the bottom. We have west over on the left side and east over on the right side. So a really easy way to remember this is never eat soggy waffles north south east west well never eat soggy waffles would be north east south west but if you can remember that little rhyme you can remember all four of the directions then we're going to go and put this line in and this will be the compass for our map so if you want to go ahead and put a circle around it just so everyone knows that that's the compass you can all right so we have some more empty spaces and i think that i'm gonna have a really grassy city so i think i'm gonna go ahead and fill in with grass except i think i'm gonna make another road that goes close to our lake over here and extend some more of our roads to it. And I think maybe up here, I'll put two things. I'll put a dock, Ooh, use the wrong side of that. We'll put the dock in our pond or our lake so you can put some boats in there and also, We'll have a parking lot so can people can park at and then maybe back here in the grassy area this can be like a state park and people can go camping over here and this grassy area will just be you know a little forest that you see when you're driving around town with some trees in it some great big oak trees. All right. So then you can go into your map and you can add any other little details you want. Maybe you think, oh, there's not enough people that live in my town. So let me go back and add some more houses. Or maybe you want another restaurant. Maybe one restaurant isn't enough for your town. So you can go in 
and add another place for your people to eat at. Any little finishing touches that you want to put. And then there it is. We have our very own pictorial hand maps. So anybody that lived in your little city or neighborhood or town would be able to tell people really easily how to get to their house, how to get to their favorite place to eat, how to get to the carnival or the pond or whatever there is in your town. Thank you so much for joining me today in this lesson and make sure that you check in at the Carnegie Center for Art and History for future lessons in person, virtual, and here on our YouTube channel. Thank you. Bye. This video is brought to you by the Carnegie Center for Art and History, a branch of the Floyd County Public Library.